Washington and Northern California. This is News 10 at 11. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. Everybody knows it. It's all a big hoax. It's, I call it the witch hunt. The Mueller report is finally in the hands of the attorney general. Good evening, I'm Brian Schnee, and thank you for joining us. The Mueller investigation has ended into possible Russian collusion during the 2016 presidential election. It's our top story tonight at 11 o'clock. A senior Justice Department official says special counsel Robert Mueller is not recommending any further indictments. The report follows a nearly two year investigation and is described as comprehensive. Now, few have seen it, including White House officials and President Trump. Principal conclusions of the report are expected to be made public, but many Democrats say it needs to be released in full. It's imperative for Mr. Barr to make the full report public and provide its underlying documentation and findings to Congress. Attorney General William Barr says he'll determine what information can be released to the public after speaking with Deputy Attorney Ron Rosenstein and the special counsel. Remember, all of this started with an assertion that Russian forces were trying to interfere in and disrupt the 2016 presidential election, possibly with the goal of helping Donald Trump. Now, the president has consistently denied any involvement. Sinclair's chief political correspondent, Scott Thuman, takes us through the case. It all began in Russia, mostly in 2015, when ramped up efforts to interfere in the U.S. election really took shape, with hacking, stealing, and spreading of disinformation in the United States, especially across social media. At the time, most were unaware. It wasn't until well after election night that things began to unravel. President Trump's national security advisor, Michael Flynn, and his interactions with Russians were under FBI scrutiny. Then in May, President Trump fired FBI Director James Comey. Did you at any time urge former FBI Director James Comey in any way, shape, or form to close or to back down the investigation into Michael Flynn? And also, as you look no. back... No. No. Next question. The special counsel had plenty of them. Robert Mueller was quickly put in charge. By July, his team raided the home of Paul Manafort, Trump's one-time campaign chairman. He and former business partner Rick Gates had worked for a pro-Kremlin political party in Ukraine and were later charged with tax fraud and money laundering. Both eventually pled guilty. Next was George Papadopoulos. The former Trump campaign aide pleaded guilty in September to lying about conversations he had with a Russian-linked professor who told him Moscow had thousands of emails and dirt on Hillary Clinton. You feel you betrayed your country! In December, another major development, Michael Flynn pleaded guilty, agreeing to cooperate with Mueller's team. Mr. Cohen. Can you just talk to us? In April of 2018, it was Trump's personal lawyer playing defense when FBI agents raided his office. Michael Cohen would eventually plead guilty and be sentenced to three years for tax evasion. He was suspected of paying hush money to a former adult film actress who alleged an affair with Trump years ago. Mr. Manafort, did you commit a crime? In September, Manafort agreed to cooperate. In late November, it was the president's turn to talk. The written answers to the witch hunt that's been going on forever. No collusion, no nothing. They've been finished. The president revealed he answered a series of questions in writing to Mueller's team regarding the Russia investigation, but not about obstruction. Two um, FBI agents here. 2019 started off with a flurry of activity, a raid on the home of Roger Stone, a one-time campaign advisor for Trump. He's charged with lying about his alleged role in the possible campaign coordination and release of Russian hacked emails damaging to the Hillary Clinton campaign. This indictment is an attempt to criminalize political speech. Now, nearly two years later, it is over. No more indictments, it seems. Mueller is done and the report in. All just waiting to see what that report contains. In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman. Team of national correspondents at our bureau on Capitol Hill will continue to cover breaking news developments throughout the weekend and into next week on the Mueller report. You can also keep track of the latest on our KTVL News 10 app and on our website, ktvl.com. An update tonight on XOXO Bridal. That's a Medford store owned by the same couple that failed to complete more than $277,000 worth of orders for Arizona brides. Just two months after opening their downtown Medford doors, they've moved locations. 
News 10's Genevieve Grippo has been tracking their business habits. She's live in our news center tonight. Genevieve. XOXO Bridal Boutique opened under the new Medford Apartments at the end of January, but now all that's left is a sign letting potential customers know that they've moved once again. Now the question is why? XOXO Bridal has relocated once again, this time to a building on Central Avenue. A sign at their new suite displays owner Erica Moat's name, also known as Erica Miltenberger, plus what looks like the new name of her shop, 406 Bridal. XOXO Bridal came under fire once a group of Phoenix, Arizona brides tracked them down. The Miltenbergers formerly owned Pearl Bridal in Phoenix, but in May of 2018, they abruptly closed their doors. We take this very, very seriously. A pending lawsuit from Arizona's Attorney General claims the shop failed to fill more than $277,000 worth of orders for hundreds of brides. There were some th pretty messed up things happening. Kelly uh, Wolfer worked at Pearl Bridal as a stylist for nine surprised. weeks. She said she was told to tell brides that dresses were designed by Milton Berger. And if a bride asked where the dress was made, she was simply to say that their headquarters were in Portland. I, I felt used and manipulated. I felt like I was used in a scheme that um, did not at all reflect on my character. Wolfer says Milton Berger also posted fake reviews of the business online, sometimes using phony profiles, even creating one using her newborn daughter's name and photo. News 10 has not confirmed why the shop recently changed its name and location within Medford, but Wolfer believes the move stems from negative reviews related to those unfilled orders in Arizona. I don't think she's ever going to be able to escape it, not until she makes it right. Two calls to Milton Berger this afternoon went unreturned. I also spoke with a property manager outside of the new uh, Medford apartment building. He said he wasn't allowed to comment on why the business moved, but gave us contact information for their corporate offices. They were closed when we called, but we'll continue to follow this story and update you as more information becomes available. With your connection, Genevieve Grippo, News 10. Brides to be, listen up. Better Business Bureau has tips for brides looking to purchase a dress. First, start shopping early. They recommend buying a wedding dress six to nine months in advance. Be clear about your budget and upfront about it to salespeople. Factor in dress alterations. It can be costly. Never pay 100% upfront when buying your dress. And always check a store's cancellation policy. Here's a live look over downtown Medford with our Mail Tribune Skycam. Rain is decreasing in our region this evening. A few places are still seeing some light showers. News 10 Chief Meteorologist Milt Radford is here with a quick look at your first alert forecast. That's right. We're seeing that front that is beginning to move off uh, to the east of our region. It's crossing uh, the state uh, at this time. There's a few lingering showers behind that, but we've had a little bit of a break. Quite a few places seeing some dry conditions tonight. Looking at the temperatures that we currently have, we're mainly seeing some 30s on the east side over parts of Northern California. 42 in Montague right now, 45 degrees in Medford. As we look at the winds, they have uh, calmed down a little bit this evening as that front continues to progress off toward the east. Overnight temperatures will drop down into the low 30s in many locations on the east side and northern California. We'll see an overnight low of about 41 in Medford, about 45 degrees in Brookings. Some of these cooler temperatures will continue through tomorrow. Coming up, though, we're forecasting some warmer weather for Sunday. For updates on your area's forecast, log on to KTVL.com and click on weather. The seasons may be shifting, but the city of Medford is placing a renewed focus on how extreme weather impacts its homeless population. News 10's Georgia Lawson tells us about the lessons learned from a year of smoke and snow. On Thursday, the city of Medford discussed new plans for sheltering people with no place to go when harsh weather hits. The city has relied heavily on nonprofit and faith groups to lend a hand, but recent years' conditions, as well as a changing local economy, have made clear that more needs to be done as an entire community. There are a lot of nonprofits in the in the community who are doing this work, you know, by the grace of their heart, but at the end of the day, things start to cost money and having a funding mechanism uh, and working with the county and the state for what that might look like is something that we have to examine more. The city is exploring options to more quickly and easily allow a group to provide emergency housing, which is currently limited by city code. The city is considering things from smoke to earthquakes, but primarily focusing on winter weather. Homeless resident Dante Carlson says there's certainly a need. I suffered uh, extreme frostbite this year. Yeah, I'm a, I was a builder most 
of my adult life, and I've never had frostbite like this, and I've been outside all year round. I mean, freezing fog, I'm building. And treating that frostbite, if the patient can't pay, ends up costing taxpayers. Most people don't understand that if we leave people on the streets, it actually costs us as a city, as taxpayers, to take care of those folks. Wouldn't it be better to actually give them a place to be off the, off of the, out of the weather and off the streets? For the past three years, Rogue Retreat's Kelly Shelter has stepped up to house people during the coldest months. On March 31st, they'll close their doors for the season, but Executive Director Chad McComa says nonprofits, faith communities, and the city will be working together to expand services before the harsh weather comes again. With your connection, Georgia Lawson, News 10. Before authorizing a location as an emergency shelter, the property owner has to come to the city to volunteer. Then the city would complete a fire and safety evaluation. Because on, on the natural gas system, it's a very reliable. We don't have these outages very often. So uh, I, I think when we do have one of these, it's good to educate that there is a longer process to bring it back on. Day four of the Avista Utilities gas outage in Ashland. The company is extending its time frame into tomorrow for many of the relights still needed to be done in the remaining parts of the city. The gas outage affects homeowners, businesses, and some restaurants in downtown had to close their doors or only serve part of their menu. Little Tokyo saw a surge of customers due to the surrounding restaurants that were affected. I couldn't ask for anything better. You know, I'm sorry that some of the other restaurants got kind of hit hard, but we were okay. We, we were riding the wave. Little Tokyo was so busy with guests that at one point had to stop letting guests in. For the latest restoration map, find it at KTVL.com. Still ahead tonight on News 10 at 11 o'clock, we continue our weekly series, Pulse of America. Coming up, we visit a city of many firsts. Milt? No new snow for the mountains lately, but we're still seeing some pretty good snow depth across the region. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at our chances for adding a little bit more snow tomorrow.